There were two pieces of film out of the hundreds and thousands of hours of content made last year that I saw over and over and over again. And every time, they made me cry. One is the talk by P&G, made by my agency, BBDO New York. And the other was that video, This Is America. When it happened, we didn't know where it came from. We didn't understand what had happened. If you look online, there's videos of people watching it. And the change in their attitudes from watching the first mm, 47 seconds to everything after was amazing. I wanted to know who was behind it. I wanted to know why and everything. And luckily, there were thousands of articles on places like Huffington Post decoding the video. Strangely, though, as an African-American, my response to the video was, so now we have a unique opportunity, all of us, to speak to someone who's not only behind this video, but the hit series Atlanta. Please welcome to the stage, Ibra Ake. It is a dangerous world, as equated by the fact that you have a broken arm? <laughs> could, yep. could you just tell the folks how that happened? Uh, so I play uh, pickup soccer when I can in Mar Vista Rec Center. And uh, it's nice, because it's one of the few places where you can get a good 11 on 11 game. But unfortunately, you got to pay the sacrifice once in a while and be goalie, which no one wants to play because you, know, you don't get to celebrate a goal if you're goalie. So, but I stopped the penalty with my hand. And but you did stop the penalty. I did stop it. We won. It was good. 4-3. So, Hold on. yeah, but this is the consequence. But yeah. as, as if you don't work hard enough. That's <laughs> yeah. fantastic. Um, so again, this video uh, will start here. Yeah. Um, it, uh, the, yeah, cultural phenomenon, certainly. Thank you. There was, and I mentioned this earlier when we were talking, there was a general response with people um, who did not understand it yeah. of what does it mean and a panic through nice people like the people at the Huffington Post yeah. to explain it in a 15-page <laughs> memo. Wait, really? Going into, oh no, this is my favorite part. Oh, okay. It's 15 pages, right. just in case you think <laughs> We're coming to your house now. Um, it's some sort of thing about who's in it, what every frame means, what the thing, it, it was a desperate kind of wanting to understand it yeah. as, as not to panic. Then from people who were African-American or they understood it, once it was over, all you could do is say, well, yeah. Yeah. Um, can I ask, when you're creating the video, yeah. um, how blatant were you being about your imagery? Um, I think, so this video was, we took a break in the, in the last album, so we didn't put out any videos. And then we we're like, oh yeah, we should do like a big comeback. And I think Donald signed like a new record deal. And oh, like, oh, we have a huge budget for videos, which we normally don't. A lot of his videos were kind of self-funded so that we didn't have to deal with the label's creative. So, we kind of were like, oh, we're going to make a video with Hero, but we also had two weeks to make it. And we kind of just, we knew we wanted to do something with representing Donald as kind of like a warlord and gun violence, but that was it. And we didn't want it to be corny, so we didn't go into it being like, this is any kind of message. And the song, the song has been like three years out and Donald just kind of wanted a song that was like ad libs and almost like ad lib. Each ad lib you just felt like was someone who had like a piece of the scene mm -hmm. in like rap culture, almost like each of their territories represented. Mm -hmm. and, and that was pretty much it. And then the more we kind of started piecing together the elements, I think we've kind of found our voice, and I think that's something I'm grateful for my collaborators with. We don't always, I think people want like, hey, let's give you a mood board, and this is the, this is, this is the picture, like before you start. And I'm like, well, then why are you making it if you know the ending? And then I, I feel like, um, yeah, a lot of it was just searching for the voice and 
you know, people analyze the video, but I, um, I, I think a lot of it was just that. That, that was the basis of it. We want, Donald wanted to, to have these kids kind of like dancing and then go into like chaos and violence and then go back to dancing. And that was like interesting. And, I, and we had the conversation where he was like, I want to like kill the kids or shoot into a crowd, but we just wanted to like kind of like make gun violence real and, and use that in the image. And, and, I, and I'm lucky to have an artist who and, and a group of collaborators who can be responsible enough that when I bring that to the table or we bring that to the table, they know we're not gonna like misuse that opportunity or rep misrepresent that opportunity. And a lot of it is finding tone. I hope that answered your question. I've, I'm bad well, no, no, at that was questions. Good. So, so after you make this, <laughs> after you make this, then the world tries to decipher it. <laughs> yeah. Technically, it's black culture. Yeah. And then the day after, yeah. everybody, yeah. From the Today Show to Late Night yeah. is trying to decipher what you put together. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I think a lot of what we make is a conversation. And, I, you know, everyone wants the answers, but it's like talk amongst yourself. There are people that interpreted it as being like, we're pro, you know, we're talking about black on black violence, which it wasn't the case. And like, but, but as much as I can explain, I, I realize with art, you can't explain to everyone, like there's not enough time. You won't be an artist if you if you spend all day explaining yourself to people. Like you, that's not your job. And so you kind of you can bring them halfway, or you can make your art bring them halfway. But I can't. You know, a lot of times all the references we put in there, everyone's rewinding and blah blah blah. But I'm like, oh yeah, this isn't. I didn't really premeditate this, but this was something I was influenced by growing up. Like. You know, the dancers and This Is America, I'm, I'm from Nigeria, I'm a Nigerian American, yeah, represent. And so, um, you know, I've always liked the way we dance and, and it's more contemporary. So I was like, oh yeah, those could be the kids in the video and I can bring my culture into the conversation. And, um, you know, people were like, oh, we're, you know, we're, we're you know, shucking and jiving and dancing to all this chaos and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, that's part of it too, but also part of it is just like my cultural like background inserted into it. So like, the, you know, there is the woke meaning, but there is also just me being like, oh yeah, I want to make something with the diaspora, which is like, you know, I was so influenced by black Americans growing up in Nigeria. I was born here, but I was raised there. And it excites me when I can meet Donald, an American rapper, be friends with him, and be like, hey, I'm gonna put all the cool shit I like that's a kid growing up that no one is gonna fully get, but I think they'll appreciate it. Well, and, it, yeah. seemed like, it seemed like you made a big pot of gumbo and everybody's trying to figure out what's in it. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm like, yeah, gumbo is good because you put a lot of random stuff in it. And like, and at, at the end of it, that, that's it. And then tonally, we can like, shift it into like a message or like an aesthetic but you know even even part of that the dances we chose are picking sherry silver who's a choreographer i'm like I, you know michael jackson was a huge influence on me because as an artist i felt like he was very deep but i could just watch him as a kid and be like i like the way his arms move and like and and i, I you know we can be intellectual but at, at, at the same time you know is, is it a hit, <laughs> we always say, and it's like, oh yeah, like, would a five-year-old respond to this? And I, and I feel like anytime I make something where I'm like, no, let's take away the politics or the intellectualizing of it, like, is this pretty to look at? I think, you know, a lot of my job is giving people vitamins, but like hiding it as much as possible. And I think that's something I kind of like focus on a lot, yeah. So, um, you're, um, you're here at, here are all the black people. Yes. Um, here are all the I see you. black people and everybody else. Um, we, want, we want to make this about you guys. Yeah. So we want you guys to have the most time to ask questions. Yeah. So I'm going to ask three questions that I think are probably everybody wants to know. Uh, can I, I'm not going to ask, can I work with you in Childish? That would, that's probably no. Can I work with you in Childish? Oh, no, I'll ask him later. Um, 
But I am going to ask questions about kind of being an artist and, and what you've been able to do. Yeah. I'll be honest, um, there's not a lot of people we can think of yeah. or look at that are in this position. There's not a lot of writers or television shows where as an African American or person of color, yeah. or even a woman working as a writer, where yeah. you can think of aspiring to this and someone can be on a stage in that chair, you can be like, I can be like that guy. Yeah. So um, what advice would you have for everybody to, as they move forward, to keep inspired? Um, I think it's, you know, it's kind of, listen to your voice, listen to others, you know, respect yourself and others, and, and you know, just because you're, you're always gonna be fighting an institution and the man and, you know, just the, the, the interesting about being a, an artist, especially being a black artist or a female artist or like, you know, uh, what, whatever it is, it's like with art, you're being subversive and just by the nature of a lot of the people in this room, your existence is subversive. So I think you're straight on the story you have to tell. I think a lot of it is just understanding and navigating and getting the information and trying to set yourself up to be able to like weather the storm to like make it there because a lot of success in making it or, or it, it's just hanging in there, honestly. Like that's why you know, art is a rich kid sport is because there's more resources for them to hang in there. And I think that that's like a, that's a huge part of it. And I, and I think taking care of yourself for the long haul is the most important thing. And, and just figuring out a way, you know, to be in it as long as possible and sharing information. I can't stress that enough. Like, you know, there, there's so much that I've learned in the last like three years, especially, I mean, I, I learned, I've learned so much even before that, but in terms of resources or what's available or what I, it's, it's allowed for me to imagine, like in the writer's room, for example, like I didn't know they gave you like an assistant to just like think about, write down all the funny stuff I said while me and my friends smoke weed. I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, like anyone can write a hit show if someone pays for that. Like, <laughs> you're gonna You're gonna remember some good jokes and so, I, you know, th that, I think that's important, and uh, and um, but yeah, I guess like that's. I, don't, I hope that makes sense. But no, yeah, I mean yeah. you're part of a writers' room on Atlanta. Are yeah. you guys familiar with the television show Atlanta? Anybody? Yeah. So so you write for that show, and yes. you're part of that show. You talk to me that you have a writers' room. Yeah. And the uniqueness of your writers' room is that everybody's black in your writers' room. Yeah. Um, we said that when you have a writer's room and everybody's not black, you call it a writer's room. Yeah. But in Atlanta, they have a black writer's there's room. There's a room. Because yeah. there's black people there. Yeah. Oh, definitely. So the weirdness is, to you, it's just a writer's To you, it's just where you work. Yeah. Is, have you ever worked in a writer's room that's mixed with a lot of different people? I've never worked in a writer's room outside of Atlanta, really. I don't think. Maybe two of our writers have now, but most of us are kind of, yeah, kind of in our own world. And, and I have worked with other people in some capacity, but um, for the most part, ours is just the first, you know, black writers' room. But I, it's interesting, yeah. Like growing up in growing up in Nigeria, also was interesting with with being an artist and being black. And I don't want to like separate myself from that but I mean I remember even coming here and seeing like Obama be president for the first time and grew up in Nigeria I was like oh wow I, I grew up with like a black president always and I didn't think that was important to like met the absence of like a black president and then I saw people react to a black president and like my black friends crying about this thing I grew up with that I took for granted and it gave me such an appreciation for how you know people people define the world already and and leave you out of that conversation and you can't like let that kind of like mess with you mentally or it, it, even to this day like you know when people there's certain roles on set where people are like oh you're a woman doing that and 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 I do it too like I'm I don't want people to think like I'm outside of the you know there's a lot of like uh, 
kind of like brainwashing that I have to like let go to like let myself achieve more and and there's a you know there's just, there's just a lot of stuff of learning we have to do and a lot of that is people you know just it's all out of laziness and and and, and just how they perceive you yeah, yeah you speak a lot about normalizing blackness yeah and that's all I mean it's yeah. normal for me because it's my only option yeah but what do you mean about that in society are you talking or in work I think I think there's so many times like I don't man I, like yeah I don't I don't think about like my blackness till someone makes me think about my blackness and then I'm like oh yeah like you know I'm like I remember I when I wait tables I have a deep voice and and to navigate in like the corporate world you know everyone seems sorry to bother you or anything like that where it's like yeah you know, that sorry to bother you email. Like I speak in a higher octave than I normally do. I'm Nigerian, we, we don't say please and thank you. And like, that's culturally fine. And, and, and we have a certain tone that we speak in. And, and I'm like, oh, you have certain limitations that you put on me, unless like I play the game this way. I, I'm friends with Ryan Coogler and I'm like, I don't know how you let these white people trust you with your accent. Like, I want to be, <laughs> I, I, I want to be like you, bro. Like, but um, I, 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 and I think that's something I, I always forget. And I'm like, oh, you don't trust me or you see me in this narrow view or, you know, I can't tell you how much, I, I feel like my show is a very varied show. Atlanta, we do a horror episode, we'll do a weird episode, but all of the stuff we all get is just black stuff, black stuff, black stuff and an occasional like good thing but people you know you're you're always going to be in a box and you can't explain yourself to people people are only going to see the tip of the iceberg of what is you or your past or the culmination of your experiences and and I think part of my task is to open the gates where I can be a free thinker like you know e e even with me trying to make more money financially as like a professional. It's really just because for the first time in my life, I understood like, oh wow, I've been running off survival so much professionally. And I, you know, you guys are all here because I'm sure a lot of you are running off survival professionally. I was talking to Steve Donald's brother as a writer and he's like, you know, Atlanta is the first time I've had a chance to think about what I want to do in my life. Like, and it's a success. He's like, I don't even know if I want to be a writer. He's, but he's like, this is the first time or first opportunity. He's giving me the space to stop like hustling to survive for a second and be like, who am I? And I think that's, that's I, want, I just want to be, I just want to get to that part for like my children and my children's children where they can just be like, who am I? And not like, I am black, it's okay. And then like, who am I to other people? And like, yeah. So with all of the success of Atlanta, um, and then Black Panther, yeah. and then that video coming out, yeah. I had a bit of an attitude all year. <laughs> um, also the money coming in yeah. and the success of it financially, because yeah. green is the one color everybody agrees on. Yeah, no, on. definitely, yeah. Um, do you feel that uh, you guys are opening this, part of the opening of this new age of entertainment? And yeah, I mean, I, I think so, but I don't, I don't want to see, I don't, I, you know, I don't want it to seem like, we, we are definitely, and, and I think, and I think it's good, I, you know, I don't think we're like highbrow or lowbrow, I, I think we represent like, you can be black and understated, and we don't have to like, we don't, we don't have to like define ourselves in broad strokes for people, and I think that's what we represent, but I think, we, we have open doors, but I think there's a lot of work to do. I, you know, like Issa Rae, what, got nominated for what, like one award for the Emmys? Uh, how many did Barry get? How many did Mrs. Maisel get? Like how many people actually watched or talked about those shows last year? And, and it's cool that like, yeah, we're getting 16 Emmy nominations, but I'm like, we're talking about like women. She has the hottest female show and we're not acknowledging that. Right. And, and you know, I have friends, we have, we have writers and people on Barry, but then they come along and like, it, I don't think, you're, or the way people talk about, you know, don't talk about Solange sometimes, or like there's, there's so many artists, I think, I think it can be kind of like pick and choosy what we highlight or when we highlight it uh, based on the trend of like what's 
what we're supposed to care about that year. And I think like my goal, I, I hope is where that can be kind of like stable, like the interest in black culture can be stable. And like, you know, even with magazines, for example, a lot of times your black cover stars come in February because that's when there's like the least circulation for print. And it's, so it's Black like, History Month. Yeah, Black History Month or January because it's, it's, the, it's the least risk. And like, so th there's just like a lot of stuff. And I, and I think a lot of times with people being successful or having like moments where we can like, we shift the zeitgeist or you can't escape like a story like us, I feel like people use that to distract from the work that still needs to be done as far as like representation. Well, a lot of yeah. times, a lot of times every network needs their black show. Yeah, no, definitely. So now we have the black show. And then yeah. when it's time for Emmys, they're like, oh, well, yeah. let's give a black award. Uh, like, I feel like, I, I don't know how many times they cut to Hero and us for diversity at the Emmys, but it was pretty much that and Issa Rae and that was it. And so, <laughs> and like, yeah, and, and, and even, as much as our success, I mean, this is, I'm just gonna be keep, keep it 100. Like, yeah, I, Steve wrote his first show, his first episode of television, Steve got nominated for an Emmy. He, um, we, 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 have, we have all these accolades, but there's so many times I will pass on a project with all my accolades, and it goes to someone else with like zero on their portfolio because there's no one else for that to go to. I can't tell you how many times where I'm looking, I'm, people are asking me for like, hey, is there like a black person to do this? Mm -hmm. Is there, because there is the inventory, but no one has the distribution. And even the more I get to meet all these like, you know, executives at networks and things like that, I'm like, oh, you're just old white guys who are busy and don't have time to meet all the black people. And, <laughs> and so that's a lot, of, a lot of the, you know, struggle we see is just out of laziness right. and, and just, being, I'm starting to see that more and just being more aware. And I think it's also important, you know, to call people out, uh, to, to stand up, even if it makes your life a little bit harder, but it, you know, it, it, it all does add up. And, and I think it, it's also important as much as you might be angry or complain about something or, or whatever. I think it's also important to remember all the, all the black people like, you know, I think a lot of times I'm like, oh, I wish there was more representation, but I've, I've, this is the thing I've been trying to do more where I'm like, I'm trying to remember more like black artists I like. So when people are like, hey, we need a director, I'm like, hey, you know, go to this person, go to like Kimberly Drew, go to right. Sophia Allison, go to um, Superimposed Studios. They're like a black ad agency for, for work. And so, and, and do that with peers, not just people that have made it, but but, but kind of you have to set the example and value value the people that are like you so right. that they do become like a household name. I was reading this thing from um, I was reading this thing from Kimberly Drew interviewed Mary Kay Weems about being an artist and she, she Mary Kay Weems basically broke it down. You can actually put an Excel sheet and you can there there there's like limits on what everyone has sold as an artist in the art world based on your race and gender. So it's like the highest selling piece is like um, a white male, white female, black male, black, yeah, like, and you can rank. So, so you know, I think it's, it's not about how well you make something or how well you play. There is an actual system and there, there are actual ceilings. So you have to value yourself outside of that infrastructure and you have to value other people outside of that infrastructure.